was the idea of this event to bring together the ICT standards developers and the automotive industry experts to work towards um, helping the development of the technology which uh, of course uh, we're now seeing in, in, uh, in the modern cars on the road and uh, a lot of new exciting uh, developments coming along on, on the horizon. We have a great opportunity to address how technical development, ICT technology development to support of this future network cars. Well, the biggest challenge has been the evolution of how we do the connected vehicle, vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications, vehicle-to-infrastructure communications, vehicle-infrastructure technology into the cellular standards. That's now been accomplished, and we're working through with the car companies and the regulators to look towards, hopefully by about 2020, having those technologies automatically included in all cars that get manufactured in the major countries in the world. If you want to see some autonomous driving, you can go to Gothenburg. Um, already this year, we are starting off with uh, 100 families, um, uh, real families, not just employees, uh, uh, driving around in Gothenburg with autonomous driving capabilities. Uh, and we've said that by 2021, we will have a full commercial offering. Uh, to work together with other sectors. And when we speak about autonomous vehicles and connected cars, um, it's, it's inevitable that uh, ITU and the ICT uh, providers, as well as the UNEC and the mobility uh, people, talk to each other and they consider future regulations together. Five G is one of the critical infrastructure to support of this uh, network of cars. This is why we are focusing on this five G development as a very important requirement. But also, this IoT is developing many of the areas. So, how we can ensure this security over the air, the so down of this vehicle software. This is another part. And also very recently, we announced one of our new recommendations about the vehicle platforms. You will not have a secure vehicle unless you have connectivity and uh, software update capability because there's so much code in cars, it's already buggy when it leaves the factory, it's going to need to be uh, protected. There is, in the car industry, a very specific split on security. There is safety on one side, which is about uh, the reliability of the car from a security perspective, which is pretty much covered, calculations are okay, that works. And there is the cyber security, which is another world. And this one is actually uh, quite under risk when you see all the white hat, hat people who actually have managed to hack a number of cars in a number of ways. Uh, and the problem here is not that we cannot secure it, the problem is, is the economic cost. Security is the big one and the industry is looking for standards and, and guidance and direction on this and basically it's, it's a, a riddle with no simple solution uh, because the car, because of, it, it is an open platform, it's uh, by, by definition a, a vulnerable platform. Uh, we think once uh, this technology is mature, that, uh, that it would increase the, the, safety, on, uh, the, the safety on the roads. Uh, first, we think on the highway, so that would be, I think it would be, have an immediate impact on the highway because the task of driving in the highway is quite a little bit easier than uh, to cities. And we hope that once the, the technology would increase in her, its maturity, that this would be also the case in an urban area and even in rural area. What's coming by the end of this year, early next year, will be the first implementations of intrusion detection systems, the kind of thing you take for granted on your phone or your desktop computer. We already see that the first sort of initial steps towards autonomous driving with all the different kinds of assistive uh, functionality that's available is helping a lot in terms of reducing risk.
to be a big challenge in terms of decision making because there may be situations where you, you would actually sacrifice someone in terms of accidents if you would let the car be autonomous. So this is, to be honest, not resolved. And until this is resolved, I really don't see how we are going to have a full-fledged autonomous car in the street. I think it's going to take a much longer than I hear. It's very, very complicated to put these pieces out. They can be done in tests, in limited circles, um, even to get um, production cars that people can buy that would cover all expressways will probably be 23, 24. And local roads may be as late as 2030 or more before we can really get there.